stayed in the cold water hut last night. Just at kind of the outflow of Lake Rotorua. And tried a little bit of fishing last night but didn't catch anything. And then went out this morning again at about 5.30 a.m. I'm just at the outflow of the uh, of the Travers stream. I caught a nice little rainbow trout. It's about a foot long. It's the first trout on the new spinning reel. And did a lot better than the last time I tried fly fishing, that's for sure. So put them back. I think it's like good luck to put back your very first fish and maybe I think you're supposed to put back the first fish that you catch each day, but the very first fish you should put him back for good luck. Just so you don't anger the fish gods by killing the first thing that you catch. I'm gonna go up to Capel's hut tonight. Hopefully it's a little bit quieter. There was a big school group that came in to cold water hut last night. Luckily they stayed at the campground so the hut was pretty quiet. But there shouldn't be anyone up at Capels, and hopefully there's still a bit of snow around as well. It'll give me a good feeling for what level the snow's at for going over Sunset Saddle two days from now. From the look of that snow cover on the north side of Mount Hopeless, it's not looking very good for doing Sunset Saddle because Sunset Saddle's at 2,000 meters as well and half of it's self-facing so there's going to be a lot of snow cover on the southern side of it because it doesn't get the sun exposure. So I'm thinking that instead of going to Kapola Hut tonight, just for the sake of checking out the snow, I'll go up um, to Hopeless Hut tonight have a look at the saddle and then probably just bail back down maybe wild camp just the base of the cascade track and then go up the cascade track on Friday to stay at Angelus Hut Friday night and then probably come back down the cascade track Saturday stay at cold water hut again see if I can catch another trout and then walk out on Sunday via the um, lakeside track like not the one that goes to Lakehead Hut the other side and even if it's crappy raining on Sunday it doesn't really matter it's an easy track along the lake so should be fine
Had a nice night at Hopeless Hut last night. A couple came in at like probably 10 p.m. Woke us all up. Had the headlights shining in our eyes and everything. But aside from that, oh, it was lovely. There was just one other person there, a Lithuanian tourist. I think her name was Ella. And she was planning to do the um, Sunset Saddle as well. But as I kind of suspected, there was still quite a bit of snow in the kind of the valleys and the gullies and the kulars of the peaks surrounding Hopeless Hut. So I kind of assume that there's still quite a bit of snow on Sunset Saddle itself. But she was pretty committed. She's got her booking for Angelus Hut, so she has to go through. But here's hoping that she does all right. She's no more prepared than I am. Sneakers and poles and things like that. No boots or axe axes. But, ah well. And I guess that's kind of a another lesson in planning. There's all of these um, backcountry safety books and pamphlets and things say plan your trip. But the issues with plans is that you become very attached to them and if things start going sideways sometimes you put maintaining the plan above your own safety. So say I have to be out by this date because that's what my intentions were that I told people that I left my intentions with but it's not safe to be out by then and I need to take a different route which means that I'll be three days late. Is it safer to do something really sketchy to be on time so your intentions people don't freak out or is it better to let your intentions people freak out call the police and call in the helicopters and everything but instead you've taken the safe route that you're not going to get in trouble on. And that's kind of why I think that it's, yeah, it's great to have a plan, but you should also be pretty willing to wing it as you go change the plan as the circumstances allow or dictate.